The stiffness or displacement method used in structural engineering simplifies the analysis of statically indeterminate structures. It involves breaking down a complex structure into small components, calculating their stiffness, and then solving equations to determine displacements and internal forces. This method efficiently handles structures with more unknowns than available equations, making it a valuable tool for engineers to analyze indeterminate structures. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about stiffness or displacement method. And the main aim of these methods is to solve statically indeterminate structures, which we cannot solve using ordinary methods. And these ordinary methods are equations of equilibrium. So you have three equations of equilibrium if you are working in two dimensional space, summation of horizontal forces equal to zero, summation of vertical forces equal to zero, and summation of moment equal to zero. If a structure has unknowns which are greater than three, then you cannot solve it using equilibrium equations, which means that the structure is now statically indeterminate. In that case, we need specialized methods to work out member forces. There are main two categories of specialized methods, and one is flexibility of force method, other is stiffness or displacement method. My today's lecture is about the stiffness method, and I will apply this to pin-jointed structures, and I will show you a process on how do we apply this method. There are two versions of stiffness method. One is traditional hand method, which is tedious and it's, it's difficult to analyze. And I will not talk about this hand version. And the other one is the matrix version, which I will talk about, where equilibrium equations, they are written in a matrix format. It's easier to solve not only with hand, but it's easier to implement in computers as well. For this method, the degree of kinematic indeterminacy has to be known. And what is degree of kinematic indeterminacy? It is simply degree of freedom for the entire structure. And key definition is that degree of freedom for the entire member or structure minus constrained degrees of freedom. In flexibility method, when SI becomes too high, then the solution becomes really tedious. Similarly, in case of stiffness method, when KI becomes more than three, then it's very difficult to solve it with hand then we try to implement it in computer this matrix version is obviously easier to implement in computer the stiffness method is actually more popular with computer analysis the majority of computer software s frame stad etabs master series gsa all of these are based on finite element analysis and the stiffness method is one of the part of finite element analysis i will start with general notes to so consider a spring with a stiffness k and it's got length l axial force is applied so force will be equal to stiffness into displacement what is stiffness a stiffness is force over displacement a similar equation can be written for the whole structure this is the equation on which we will base our entire solution which is force is equal to stiffness times displacement here f indicates force k indicates the stiffness matrix and D indicates the displacement vector. Now clearly when we are talking about a pin jointed structure, you can only have axial stiffness, which means that pin jointed structure can take only axial loads. Now here I will talk about global and element stiffness matrix quite often. So every element of force has corresponding displacement. So if force is applied in x direction, displacement will happen in x direction. If force is applied in vertical direction, displacement will happen in vertical direction. F is equal to KD is a set of e equilibrium equations expressing the equilibrium state of joints. We'll consider a member with two dimensional pin jointed structure with length L and axial rigidity AE. It has moved from its original state BC to B dash C dash in this figure. What is the formula for forces? At N1, I will have corresponding displacement. This is N1. I will have corresponding displacement D1 here. At point 2, I will have corresponding displacement D2 dash. I will have 
node one where there is a possibility of two forces and then i will have corresponding d1 where there will be possibility of two displacements in x and y direction and then i have node two this is the starting node and node two is the ending node node 2 will have the corresponding displacement and displacement will again have two components x and y components so that's the reason this vector is going to be 4 by 1 it means four rows and one column and matrix is going to be 4 by 4 and in that way the displacement vector is going to be 4 by 1 it is necessary that the columns of this matrix should be equal to rows of the displacement vector and the stiffness can be found out using this relation a E over L, A is area, E is modulus of velocity, L is the length, and then cos square theta and sine theta cos theta. So this is a generalized formula for a stiffness matrix for pin jointed structure. The element stiffness matrices, they can be assembled into global stiffness matrix. The stiffness matrix, global or local, it has to be square. It means that rows and columns must be equal. By local or global, you might be confusing that what is local, what is global. This means that if you have a structure like this, if you have supports, this will have global axis. So if I say that my local axis is X and Y, and if I give the direction of local coordinates by arrow, it means that this is pointing upwards and leftwards. So if local coordinates means this is local to a member and global means that this is global in nature this applies to the entire structure so first we will compute the stiffness matrices for elements and then we will assemble it for the whole structure the stiffness matrix has to be symmetric which means that if you change rows with the column it will still give you the same result which means that the members across the diagonal they have to be same so if you have some members here some numbers across the diagonal this bit and this bit they have to be same for it to be symmetric an element showing n degrees of freedom has corresponding n by n matrix so if element has two degrees of freedom the matrix has to be two by two if it, it if it has four degrees of freedom it will be four by four and the inverse of element stiffness matrix does not exist so determinant of element stiffness matrix is, is zero and physical interpretation of singularity it means that if there are no constraints applied to the element to prevent rigid body motion it can go pretty much to anywhere and this is a physical interpretation of rigid body motion so if no constraints are applied if this is the element element three if you do not apply any constraints it can go in pretty much any direction it can go leftwards it can go rightwards it can go upwards so it will undergo a rigid body motion but if you are applying any constraints then i mean certainly it will stay uh, formulation of stiffness matrix how do we formulate stiffness matrix consider this structure at each joint the member can move in x and y directions and arrows here now it is very important to understand the sign conventions capital letters show joints and small letters they show members and arrows that you see here they show direction of local axis and you can assume direction of local axis to be any direction so for example if i am saying de1 de1 means that displacement at starting point of this near end of this and if i am saying de2 d small e2 it means that displacement at the end of this member and this arrow indicates this tells us where is the end and where is the start that defines the local member axis now you will ask that oh, does it really matter where we put arrow no it doesn't i mean initially you arbitrarily put this arrow and and then you choose this consistent direction so if you don't choose consistent direction then i mean certainly there will be an issue you choose arrow in any direction the way i choose arrows is i normally choose it from small to large in ascending order so a to d c to d and stuff like that but it's not necessary all the time so here you can see d e1 D E1 means that D small E1. I can call this as D capital C as well, capital C, because it's this joint. So near end of this joint, it has got two displacement because it's a pin jointed structure. It can move in X and Y direction. 
Similarly, DE2, DE2 can move in X and Y direction as well. Uh, is yes. one the start of the vector and two is the end? Yes, one is the start of the member and two is end of the member. And how do we know which is end and which is the start? Arrow indicates the end. So if arrow is for member G, arrow is pointing towards E, means this is the end two of the member. Thank you. You're welcome. One thing is clear that we denote joints with capital letters A, B, C, D, and E here. We denote members with the small letters, small A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And uh, there are supports here, pin support. So if you see this around here and stuff like this, this is a pin support or a simple support. We will talk about the compatibility of joints. So at joint A, I can say that I have DA1 that is equal to displacement at joint A. We will talk about total displacement a little later. For the time being, understand that this is N1 of member A and this is N1 of member B. So I can say that N1 of member B is equal to displacement at joint A and N1 of member A is again equal to displacement at joint A. So in total, displacement at joint A will be I mean, summation of these two. Similarly, at uh, joint B, I have two members connected. At joint B, DB would be equal to one end of member DD, all right, D, D1, and the end part of member C. So it would be equal to D, C2. Our force displacement equations. How do we find out member forces? PA1 is a force, and at this point, we have force PA2. So PA1, the formula for PA1 is near side displacement into stiffness minus far side displacement into stiffness. Now for PA1, near side KD is KA into DA1 minus KA. KA will stay the same because stiffness is related to member all the time. This will have a stiffness KA. This will have a stiffness KF. For PA2, near side KD, near to this one, near to this point, near to point A, the KD at the other point where it's connected to. So, so KD at this point is KA times DA2, which is this one, okay, minus KA into D1, that is on the other side. If I want to find out PB1, so PB1 will be equal to near KB, now near will be displacement db1 minus kb times displacement at the other end which is db2 now if i was finding the displacement at the other side then th this will simply be reversed then again for member c in the same way for member d in the same way and so on you can see that the total force at a is equal to summation of forces in A at this end that are coming from B and A. And at P capital B, that will have summation of forces which are coming from this member D and member C. So it will be equal to PD1 and PC, which you can see here. Total force at point C will have forces coming from four different members, PA2, P. C1 and PE1 and PF1, so which you can see over here. In the same way for PE, you will have force coming from second direction of F and second direction of G. So these were simple rules for global stiffness matrix. Now all joints are pinned over here. So what will be total degrees of freedom? So at each joint, it can go in horizontal and vertical direction. I have five joints. And at each joint, I have two displacement. It means that it will have a 10 by 10 matrix. But here I'm writing the displacement at joints as DA, D capital A. So D capital A will have X and Y displacement, just to simplify it. And D capital B will have X and Y displacement. And corresponding force in B will have X and Y component. But to write it in a very simple way, we are saying that, okay, each one will have two components, but we are writing it in a compact way. So the matrix is going to be five by five uh, here. 
but in reality it is actually 10 by 10 because at each joint it will have a possibility of translating in x and y direction although you could argue that okay a and b these are constraints but we will apply those constraints formulating stiffness metrics is one of the key element in solving problems for stiffness method force at each joint is equal to k minus k minus k and k it will have corresponding displacement as well it will have two displacements so for example p a and p c and d a and d c the member is going to be connected with two joints so if i'm talking about member a what joints is it connected to it is connected with a and c so it means that i will have something over here its connection points are a and c so i will have something over here and i will have a a a c and a c again and then c c so i will mark these locations and i will put this metric so this is a generalized form of writing stiffness matrix this is the element stiffness matrix and what i am assembling is a global stiffness matrix and then simply you will write k a minus k a minus k a this is member stiffness matrix so that's why it's small a the, the next element that i'm going to choose is b now tell me where is this b connected a and d so its stiffness matrix will be kb minus kb minus kb and so kb will appear over here okay, because this is location aa and then next location is this one yeah ad and then we have this location ad and then we have this location kb minus kb minus kb and kb so this is how we assemble global stiffness matrix and the purpose of global stiffness matrix is that we want to solve this for displacements remember c here you have to discard the direction of arrows no matter how they are connected you will simply mark the locations here member c is connected with b and c so can i say that something will appear over here at this location yeah b b and then something will appear over here as well bc and then something will appear over here bc and then finally something will be here and that would be your kc minus kc minus kc and kc member d so it is connected with b and d kd minus kd minus kd and kd member e member e is connected with c and d ke minus ke minus ke and plus ke i'll go to member f which is connected with c and e that will be kf minus kf minus kf and kf and finally g g is connected with e and d that will be kg minus kg minus kg and plus kg now this is how we assemble the global stiffness matrix what is the purpose of global stiffness matrix purpose is that we want to find out the displacement at the joints and once we find out the displacements then we can find out the forces and other things now we have to apply the boundary conditions da is zero because we have a support here it means that first row and first column will be gone why it will be gone because if you multiply it with the displacement vector it will disappear in any way and then at b we have no displacement because of support second row and second column will go away as well because when you multiply it with displacement vector it will be zero and then now we will be left with equation and then we will have to solve this equation to find out the displacements but certainly this is quite big stiffness matrix we cannot solve lots of bigger stiffness matrices with hand so now what you see over here something which is related with p c p d and e Yes, any question? I was just going to ask, could you go over that last bit again, just how you're solving it? Yes, the way we will solve it is uh, simply we will come up with three equations and then we will solve them simultaneously. Or uh, if you have forces on the left, you take inverse of this matrix and then you get these uh, displacement. Thanks for watching this lecture today. Click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture. Click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics.